Praise the Lord, it's so good to see each and every one of you here with us, virtually as though it were. They're here live at five. I wanna say God bless you, it is so good to see you, and, and may God keep you today and strengthen you in the name of Jesus. Let me first remind you that Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. You may think that you're all alone, you're not alone. The Lord is right there with you. God is right there with you. Even in your situations and issues, God is with you. Taking you out of sickness, God is with you. While you're there, God is getting ready to lift you up from shadows of doubt and plant your feet on solid ground. I believe in the prayers of the people. I believe in the prayers of people that go up to God via the name of Jesus Christ and the blood of Jesus. I believe in bold prayers. I believe in the power of praying boldly. And I know so many of you have been praying and you've been praying for us and we've been praying for you. But I want you to know that those prayers are foundations. Those are mountain moving prayers. When you pray, heaven listens. Thank you once again for joining us here live at five. And just for a few minutes, I want you to take your Bible and and we're going to be getting around to scriptures a little bit today. And in Ephesians, in your Bible, the book of Ephesians, the sixth chapter, verse 18 says this, praying always, just not sometimes or when you need something. No, God, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, God, that I have. You gave me this miracle. There's sometimes you just got to pray to God and thank him for things. You know, sometimes we ask, we ask, we ask God, we ask God, we ask God. You know, there are some times we need to break down and just say, I want to thank you. I'm going to spend this entire prayer session just thanking you, God. And I'm going to be forecasting things, Lord. I'm going to be putting prophecy forward in the name of Jesus. But here's what it says in chapter 6, verse 18. Praying always with all prayer and supplications in the spirit and i know some of us we pray in english all the time and or our mother tongue or whatever that is but i want you to break out and pray in our spiritual language our heavenly language i want you to break out and pray in tongues and i lay in my bed at night time and i just i just pray in tongues and i just say lord i'll finish the day like this father and i just worship him and in the morning i'll find time and i encourage you I encourage you if you're praying and you should pray is that you open up your morning with prayer and that you close your day with prayer let's get back to the scripture here for a moment praying with all supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints you know sometimes we have people that they join together with us and they'll say can you pray for me can, can you help me? I met a, a man out in the parking lot just, just today, and he said, can, can you pray with me? I can't believe what they're doing with vaccinations and COVID. I said, absolutely. And I want you to know, pray with all supplication, with all perseverance, Paul is writing here to the church of Ephesus. And he's saying to us, he's, he's talking to us and saying, don't give up, keep praying. Well, I didn't see my miracle my miracle didn't show up. I prayed two days ago. I want to say, keep on praying. Keep on praying. Keep on praying. And pray those bold prayers. Just don't pray fluffy or light. Pray the bold prayers. God, I need you to do something. Mountain moving prayer. Mountain moving prayer. Prayer that's going to change things in your life. Prayer that's going to change someone in your house. Prayer that's going to change the things around you. I want you to know when you pray, it gets God's attention. When you pray boldly, it gets God's attention even more. The Bible says in the 19th verse, in that sixth chapter of the book of Ephesians, and for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that utterance, that spirit of God, that holy language, that I may open my mouth boldly boldly in both my mother tongue and in the spiritual heavenly language. I'm going to speak mysteries unto God. I'm going to confuse the enemy. I'm going to confuse the enemy. 
enemy and maybe somebody listening next door to me, but I'm going to confuse the devil. I'm going to confuse the devil when I speak in other tongues, when I pray in other tongues. A Holy Ghost Christian filled with the power of God, filled with the Spirit of God, prays in other tongues, prays in your mother tongue, but pray bold prayers. However you pray, pray bold prayers. I just believe that when you break open in other tongues, praying in the Spirit, that the enemy must look and go, well, here they go again. I'm out of here. Demons must say, I can't understand this. This is a heavenly language between them and God. I'm out of here. And you confuse the enemy. And that's what we're here to do. The enemy is not designed to get on our shoulder. The devil is not designed to have the spirit of infirmity attach itself. The devil is not designed to really take over the Christian's life. The devil is the father of all lies. He is the father of all lies. Satan is the father of all lies. Every time he opens his mouth, he's lying. So when the enemy comes at you with something, you need to break open with tongues. You need to start praying in other tongues. Start praying in your mother tongue. Get in your car, roll the windows up or roll them down and just begin to shout prayers unto the Lord. You know, the Bible talks about it, that God is even in a still small voice. You can pray within yourself and you can be on the bus just behind your mask, just, just saying, Lord, help me. God, touch my life, touch my family, touch my health, touch me, Lord. Walking down the street with a mask on, praying in other tongues in the name of Jesus. And you may be in a supermarket, you're shopping around and you're picking up the soup or you're picking up the pasta. You're picking up and you're behind that mask. You're praying, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Touch bold prayers attract the attention of God. The power of praying boldly. The Bible says here in that 19th verse, and for me, the utterance is made given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly and make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador, the mystery of the gospel, I love that, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak, as I ought to speak, as you ought to speak, as you ought to say. You need to pray boldly. You need to pray with all fervence. The Bible talks that a, a, a fervent prayer of a righteous man, it availeth much. The Bible says, where two or more agree together as touching any one thing, it shall be done of them, of my Father, which is in heaven. Praying boldly for your family, for your loved ones, for your health. God, I need you to intercede. I'm going to be speaking with you if you haven't already guessed, if you haven't already surmised that the power of praying boldly. There was a man, and I may have to continue this on Sunday coming, because I believe that the power, that really there is the enemy that is trying to subvert the prayers, subvert the, push down the prayers, clamp down the prayers. No, we need to pray now more than ever. We need to pray boldly more than ever. We need to walk around our house and pray boldly more than ever. And the Bible talks about bold prayers, but before I get to that, I want to, I was researching the, the, the Jewish race in the dark ages and how life it was back then. And in my, there's a book and it's talking about a man named Coney, C-H-O-N-I. This was an ancient sage. This was a prophet within the dark ages, a Jewish prophet who believed in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, who prayed to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It's not recorded in the scripture, but it is recorded in the writings of the Jewish nation and the Hebrew people, where in this time in Israel, about a thousand, about hundred years, one BC, it was the, the century before Christ, the hundred years before, and it was a huge drought. Israel was really in the drought of its time and they were suffering. And as you know, water is pretty important back then. It was the life source. It's where they had to have it. Life 
was water. Water was life. Without it, in the Middle East, you were doomed. There was no hydro. There was no air conditioning. And the Hebrew nation began to suffer. But there was this man named Coney, this, this ancient sage, this prophet, as though it were, who believed in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They came to him and said, do something. And it's at that time that history within the Hebrew writings says that this man took and he drew a circle around himself. He took and went all the way around himself with a circle in the sand. And that he jumped in this circle and he said, I am not moving out of this circle till God answers prayer. Till the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob answers my prayer. It is this ancient sage named Coney who said, and he read, and, he, and I'm going to read the prayer that he prayed. He said, I swear before your great name, God, that I will not move from this circle until you have shown mercy to your children. I swear unto you that I will not move from this circle until you've shown mercy, Lord, to your children. It is at that time that Coney said, I'm praying for rain. I'm praying for rain. And the book that I read said he boldly proclaimed it. Lord, send down rain. And at that very moment, it began to just drop little small droplets. And this book proclaims, says that he said, no, God, I've asked for a rain that would soak the ground. And at that time, there became a strong rain. And then he prayed again and said, Lord, I'm not asking for you to send that much. I'm asking for a steady rain. I want a fresh rain on us, a fresh rain. And the sages record that in the Hebrew writings that that rain lasted for a couple days. And he saved everybody because the drought was rendered void at that point and the crops begin to grow. But it was the point that he got in that circle and he said, I'm not leaving here. I'm not leaving here till God, you do something. I'm not leaving here till you answer prayer. I'm not leaving here till you hear me. I'm not leaving here till you rescue me. God, till you raise me up in your case or in someone's case out there. You're in a drought. You're in a hard place. You're in a place where it says, I've got to get an answer from God. You need to draw as though it were a spiritual circle around you and say, I'm not leaving this place of prayer until God hears from me. Every day I'm going to show up at this specific time and I'm going to pray to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the name of Jesus so that my prayer is heard, so that the enemy is defeated. You see, the thing that cripples the enemy is prayer. When you get ready to pray, I mean pray and say, God, and from your heart, I mean from your innermost, God, I need you to answer this prayer. I need a big, bold prayer. I'm out of work. God, I need work. I'm in, I'm in, I'm in, a, I'm in a bed of sickness. God, I need you to raise me from this. I know what that feels like. And I prayed and I said, God, raise me up, Lord. Let this become history in my life so that I may once again proclaim the good news of the gospel. I want you to know that when you pray boldly, you get God's attention. Would you turn in your Bibles with me, please, to Joshua chapter 6. We're going to get into Joshua. The book of Joshua, verse 3 to 5. The Bible says there, you shall march around the city, all you men of war. You shall go all around the city once. This you shall do six days. And seven priests shall bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark. But the seventh day you shall march around the city seven times. And the priests shall blow the trumpets it shall come to pass when they make a long blast with the ram's horn. And when you hear the sound of the trumpet, that all the people, not some of the people, all of the people 
That's something to speak about unity. All of the people shall shout with a great voice, a great shout. Then the wall of the city will fall down flat and the people shall go up every man straight before him. Would you shout amen to that? How many out there right now, you have walls that need to come down? How many out there you're listening and you say, I got some walls around me. I need to see them lay down flat. I need to see them go to nothing. I need God. I need a miracle in my life. Why don't you raise your hands right where you are and say, that's me, Lord. I need a miracle. I need to see some walls come down. 2.5 million people walk the Egyptian out of in Egyptian bondage. They come out. They come out of Egyptian bondage. They walk through a Red Sea and now they're on their way to the promised land. But because of their unbelief, say it with me, because of their unbelief, there was a plan. I, I want you to know, I'm going to get into this book of Joshua and how these walls came down, but I want to dig in to the, to the 2.5 million people that came out of Egypt right now, and they came out and they looked. Keep in mind, we're going to come back to Joshua on these walls because your wall is coming down. But watch the faith back in the desert here where 2.5 million people wander around a desert, but the Bible says because of their unbelief. When you walk around your wall, you can't not believe. You gotta believe. And I'm trying to draw a collage with these two, with these two stories, with the two epic events so that you would understand that God would not allow a generation to see the promised land because of unbelief. So when you pray boldly, you've got to pray to God and say, I refuse to deal with unbelief. When I pray, I'm going to believe God right here, right now, that he's going to accomplish that which he said. I need walls to come down in my life. I don't have time to mess around. I don't have time to listen to naysayers. I got, I got some things going on in my life. I need walls to come down. The Bible goes on to say that as as, they, as these Egyptians, as they walk through this desert with their unbelief, they never got to their promised land. And that every person, think about this for a second, that every person that was 40, they're on their way. They're on their way to Jericho. Watch this, that every person that had been, for the 40 years and under, had been born in a desert. Every person... These are people that have never seen a city. They have never seen a brick. These Hebrews never saw a tower. They never saw building material. They never saw walls. All they saw was desert. Where they lived was in Bedouin tents. Where they lived was just tents. And, and, and that's what they did for 40 years. So 40 years out of everybody that was born there, they had never seen a city, a wall, a brick. Never seen any of that. And the first city that they encounter is Jericho. Think about this. So they're coming out. They're coming through the desert. 2.5 million of them walk out of Egyptian bond and they're coming through. And all of a sudden they come to Jericho and they see walls. Well, they got some clear instruction. They got clear instruction from God. Walk around these walls. Walk around once. Don't say anything because sometimes what you say creates an element of doubt in your life and you begin to give the enemy something to work with. You don't need that. You need faith. You need full belief that God is going to accomplish what you're praying. I mean, full belief. God to each the Bible says is given a measure of faith. You need full belief, full belief that God is going to accomplish that miracle in your life, that God is going to bring you out. I'm trying to get you to pray bold prayers and understand the power of praying boldly. So the first city they encounter is the city of Jericho. They're coming in and they're looking at Jericho. They've never seen anything like this. Anybody that was 40 years old and younger, they've never seen a wall that is 60 feet high. They've never seen it. They've looked and saying, that's a big wall. 
And some of you may be saying that in your life right now. That there is, that's a big wall. I don't know if I'm going to get through this one. Some of you are saying, I don't know whether I'm going to make it till next week, till next month. I don't know. That's a big wall, a 60 foot wall. These Hebrew children were looking at 40 feet wide. The Bible says that they race chariots on the top of it, 40 feet wide. They would watch and they would watch people look down and heckle at them. Look at those Hebrew children walking around the wall. Who do they think they are? Let them laugh at you. Keep on praying. Let them, let them heckle you, but keep on praying. Let them make fun of you, but keep on praying. Keep in there and keep the faith in Jesus' name. The, you, you have the blood of Jesus upon you. You have the name of Jesus upon you. It doesn't matter who's up on the wall, who's heckling down at you, because them walls are coming down in the name of Jesus. It doesn't matter how big they are. And, and too many of us are really facing walls today. So many are facing walls in our life with COVID, with shutdowns, with lockdowns. It's, these are walls of epic proportion that we have never seen in my lifetime. But I want you to know that God can take any wall and he can flatten it down. No wall has the power against God. No wall has more power than the Lord. He'll, the Bible says that he will make mountains level. I want you to know that's our God. He's a mountain moving God. He's a wall falling God. That's who we serve. Many of you know that your destiny is basically on the other side of your wall. You look and you say, well, how am I going to get to this? How? No, you say, look how far that is. Look at that wall in between me and my destiny and my, where I need to go in life. In the name of Jesus, pray boldly. The power of praying boldly. God has a supernatural plan for your life to bring down the walls. If you surround yourself with walls of prayer, I want to dig into this. You need to surround yourself with walls of prayer. You need to surround yourself, which you take serious about prayer. God takes serious. You need to pray seriously and then God will take it seriously, which you pray boldly. God will take boldly. Would you, would you, a fervent and a righteous prayer of, uh, it availeth much in the name of Jesus. God, I take this serious. The Lord says he'll take it serious and he'll hear and he'll answer you. Bible says that this poor man looked up to the hills from whence comes his help for his help comes from the Lord. The Bible says that God, my God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Jesus Christ is a very present help in the time of your trouble, in the time of your struggle. Is there anybody out there that has trouble? Is there anybody out there that has struggle? In the name of Jesus, he is your present help, your present help. He's just not a song. He's more than a song. I love the songs. He's, he's more than a rhyme. He's more than a card. He's, he's my everything. And he's your present help in the time of your trouble. Tell the devil, I'm not giving up my territory. I'm surrounded by walls of bold prayer. I'm surrounded by walls that give me life. If all I got to do is pray, then I will pray. I'll raise one hand to God and pray if all I got is the energy to raise one hand. I'll, I'll do a little dance if all I got to do and pray in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray bold prayers before you. I'm not giving up my territory to the devil. You need to tell him that right now. Why don't you say it? I am not giving up my territory to the devil. I'm not giving up my kids. I'm not giving up my family. I'm not giving up my health. I'm not giving up my job. I'm not giving up my career, my schooling. I'm on my way to my diploma. I'm not giving up. I'm on my way to my career. I'm not giving up. In spite of COVID, I'm not giving up. In spite of lockdown, I'm not giving up. My prayer is more powerful than any wall. Those walls are coming down because of the power to pray 
bold prayers, praying boldly in the name of Jesus Christ. Pray. Do you know what prayer does? Prayer, when you pray, you prophesy about your own life. They're prophecies. Prayers are prophecies of your future. Prayers are prophecies saying, I am going, Lord. I thank you that I'm succeeding. I thank you, Lord, that I'm healthy. I thank you, God, that I'm making it through. I thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, because you make ways where there seem to be no ways. That's my God. Pray in the future. Don't just pray in the present. Pray in the future. Father, I thank you because you're doing this, because you've done this, Lord. Call it into existence. Not, you can't just pray, Lord, I got, I got a headache and I, I need you to fix my headache, God, I, I, I need you. No, God, I thank you because, Lord, I'm intelligent, I'm spiritual, I got a sharp mind, I got a godly mind. Lord, that's my mind. I thank you because I have no pain. I thank you. Throw it into eternity via faith and prayer. If you'll throw it up to God, if you'll push it up to the Lord, what goes up comes down. What you push up to heaven, what you push up to heaven comes down. It, the Bible talks about that. You got to take it by force. You got to, for the violent, take it. You got to get kind of really all stubborn about your prayer and say, devil, you are not taking my territory. You're not taking my life. You're not taking my job. You're not taking my finances. You're not taking anything. God has given it and I am keeping it in the name of Jesus. That's what I'm doing. That's where I'm going. Devil, get under my feet and understand I'm in communication with the God of gods and the Lord of lords. I'm talking to Jesus. I'm talking to heaven. And when I ask, I will receive. When I knock, God's opening the door. When I seek, I will find him. I'm talking to you today about the power of praying boldly before the Lord in Jesus' name. I don't have a lot of time today, but I do want to tell you this, that we need to pray for you right now. I'll continue this on Sunday. I, I, I want to bring to you some great, great ministry. I want to bring to you the fervency of the Holy Spirit, what God has laid on my heart about praying boldly before the Lord. I mean, taking it to another level that I'm going to draw this circle and I'm going to pray until something happens in Jesus name. I'm going to pray until church opens. I'm going to pray until I can sit again and raise hands in a holy house to a holy God. I'm going to pray boldly for family. I'm going to pray boldly for my health in Jesus name. But I want you to join me on Sunday morning because I want to bring to you some revelation that God's going to bless you, take you once again from shadows of doubt and plant your feet on some solid ground. If we need solid ground more than ever, we need it today. If we need solid ground, we need it more than ever today. I want you to know that God has you in the hollow of his hand. God loves you. We love you. And I need you, if you've got prayer requests, if you need prayer, please make sure that, and we'll pray before we leave here today, but you need to write in to us. You need to email, call the phone. The office is open all the time. You need to call in and you need to, we'll be more than happy to pray with you, to join together. Take this, take this stream and send it to all your friends. I talked to somebody the other day and uh, they said, oh, I have 300 contacts and, uh, on my Facebook or 300 people on Facebook. I said, that's tremendous. That, that's really something. Praise God. And uh, I said, Have you, you need to post something. I, they looked and said, yeah, I think I, I, I should probably post some stuff from prayer, prayer palace and, and ministry. I said, that's a great idea. Put your faith out there. Put your faith out there. Let people know that you're born again Christian. Let them know that you're born again and that you love the Lord. I promise you, Jesus said it very clearly. He said that if you'll confess me before men, I'll confess you before the Father. It doesn't matter how good you sing. It doesn't matter how many people you know. And I've seen, you know, some people know lots of people. But Jesus said also, if you deny me before men, I will deny you before the Father. Every chance you get, I'm a born again Christian. 
Here's my church. Here's my faith. Here's what I believe. Here's where I stand. Oh, why well, I have to unlike you? Well, then unlike you. Let them unlike you because I'd rather be holding hands with the Lord than holding hands with something else. I'd rather be holding hands with faith in Jesus than holding hands with the world. So you need to understand, put your testimony out there. If there's ever a time that you need to testify, it's now. People need to hear your testimony. They're counting on your testimony. Some of you, perhaps they haven't known you're saved and you've been on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook for 10 years and they still don't know you're saved. How would Jesus look at that? Confess the Lord publicly and privately to everybody in Jesus name. Stand on the word of God. What would Jesus say? I mean, what would he say? I, what would God say? I gave you my son, Jesus. I gave him for God so loved the world that I gave my only begotten son that whosoever believes I gave you my son, Jesus. And you knew 600 people, 500 people, and you didn't tell anybody. Oh, you were more concerned about your fashion on Facebook. Oh, you were more concerned about how you sing on Facebook or you were more concerned about your trend and building your brand. No, you need to build the brand of Jesus Christ. Came to this earth, crucified, rose again, went to heaven and is coming again for those that love him. I'm telling you folks, testify with all your might. Build the brand of the cross of Jesus Christ. Build the brand of the blood of Jesus. Build the brand of the name of Jesus. What's your brand? What is anybody, what is any brand compared to the brand of eternal life? Compared to the brand of the Bible? Compared to the brand of Jesus of Nazareth? Compared to Him, the God of gods and the Lord of lords, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? What is your brand compared to the, to the I am that I am? What is your brand compared to He is the your El Shaddai? He is your Jehovah Jireh. He is your all in all. He is. What is your brand compared to him and his blood that he shed for you on the cross? What is your brand compared to what he did for you? It's in your hands. I give you Jesus. I give you Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And if you don't know him, would you repeat after me? Dear Jesus, come into my heart. I confess my sin. Forgive me, Jesus, I am yours. Lord, I haven't been right. I haven't done what's right. I've been wayward. I thought I was serving you, but I really wasn't. God, touch me. I confess you as my savior. In Jesus' name, I am saved. If you prayed that prayer, we believe that you, according to the Bible, you're saved. For with the mouth confession is made unto salvation, with the heart men believe unto righteousness. You are righteous because of Jesus Christ. Thank you once again for joining us here. We love you so much. Take time, build that brand of Jesus, pray bold prayers. And I know that together we will build the kingdom of God. We'll build the kingdom of God and, and we'll put the enemy under our feet. Once again, I pray that God would bless you, that he would keep you, that he would make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. I pray that the Lord would lift his countenance unto you and give you peace in the name of Jesus as you pray bold prayers in Jesus' name. God bless you.